What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install a split second enricher into your turbocharged vehicle. So this is the biggest question I get asked is, Zach, how did you manage air fuel? How did you do tuning? Um, as you know, Jeep Wranglers don't come turbocharged stock. So this is my turbocharged setup that you guys can check out my other videos on um, that I finished about 3,000 miles ago. It's been phenomenal. Uh, the split second enricher has been working beautifully. I noticed that there's no videos on how to install this, how it works, so this video will go over exactly what it's doing, how it works, and how to get it installed into your vehicle. Alright, so this very detailed drawing may help you guys understand what's going on a little bit better. So you can think of your engine like a giant air pump. You have your intake and you have your exhaust. So your intake draws the air in into the engine, and your exhaust gets rid of it. So the way your ECU works and all the tuning works is your ECU has to determine how much fuel needs to be injected into the air coming in to create a proper burn cycle. So the way that does that is it's two different ways. You have closed loop and you have open loop. Closed loop is what we're going to be talking about today, which is 90% of the time your car is running under. So the reason this is called closed loop is because the ECU sends a 5 volt signal down to your O2 sensor. Your O2 sensor reads the air fuel ratio in the exhaust and then outputs a signal back to the ECU. So this will be anywhere from zero to five volts. Now your ECU interprets what the signal is from the O2 sensor and says whether that's rich or lean and then can adjust how much fuel goes back into your intake. So that's the closed loop. So on a regular naturally aspirated car, the air fuel ratio is gonna be about 14.7 to one. That's stoichiometric, which means there's a complete chemical combustion of the air fuel ratio coming out of the exhaust. So that means you get the most efficient burn for how much fuel, blah, 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 blah. But when you now have a boosted car, you're going to see, that's why you see the air fuel ratios on a wide band gauge, um, goes anywhere from usually 10 to like 15. Um, so when we start talking about boost and we get into boosted cars, the air fuel ratio that's desired in a boosted vehicle under boost is going to be 11.5 to 1 air fuel ratio. So you want a little bit richer environment in the combustion chamber as a safety barrier to prevent pre-detonation or knocking of the cylinder, which is in turn safer for the engine. So when you're converting a car from naturally aspirated to boost, you're gonna, the ECU isn't gonna wanna inject that much fuel into the combustion chamber because it doesn't need to and it wants to be as, as efficient as possible. So what the split second enricher does is it's going to allow the car under boost to drop down to this air fuel ratio only in closed loop so this won't work in cars that immediately go into open loop if you go full throttle or under heavy load in the case of my jeep and many vehicles they're in closed loop 90 percent of the time unless you're on full throttle for a long time then it may go into open loop so i did a lot of experimenting with it before i tore it apart and did the whole um, turbo kit and that's what I found so again I have over 3,000 miles on it now and I've yet to see it go into open loop once so that's where the split second enricher comes in so the way it works now is that the signal wire coming back to the ECU is going to be cut and the split second enricher is going to intercept that signal so it's going to take the wire coming off the O2 sensor to the split second enricher and it's going to go take a wire back to the ECU. So this kind of acts like a, they call it a piggyback ECU. So basically, this just messes with the signal to cr make the ECU think it's running lean under boost. So your car runs completely stock. It stays at the 14.7 under boost. And as soon as the split second enricher, this will be your vacuum line going to the enricher. As soon as this detects over one PSI of boost or however you set it, then it's going to modify the signal back to your ECU thinking it's running lean and therefore your ECU is going to inject more fuel into your intake to try to compensate. So that in turn it's going to take your air fuel ratio and drop it down to about an 11.5 where you want to set it. Alright so the installation of the split second enricher is extremely straightforward. The instructions doing an excellent job of walking you through it but this might make more sense visually to uh, show you actually how I set it up and how I installed it. Um, so here we go. So my setup is going to be your typical naturally aspirated four-cylinder, um, primary O2 sensor, secondary O2 sensor, uh, before and after the cat. 
The only O2 sensor you have to tap into is your primary O2 sensor, which would be the first one before the cat. Um, in my case, I have a four wire O2 sensor, which is, I think, the most common. It's gonna have two white wires, a gray wire, and a black wire coming out of it. Those are very, uh, very common. I, I see them a lot. Um, so hopefully this will help you guys out if you have one of them. So the split second enricher itself has a wiring loom that comes off of it with a plug. So the enricher itself has a wiring loom coming off of it with a bunch of different assorted wires. Uh, in our case, we're only going to need five of all of these wires. So if you come down and follow the harness itself, the only five you're going to need is the red wire, the yellow wire, the yellow and green wire, the tan and black wire, and the black wire. So the first wire you're gonna need to set up is the black wire. So the black wire is just gonna be ground, which I grounded right to the tub. The red wire is gonna be your switched ignition, so your 12 volt source. And the other three wires are gonna be tapped into your O2 sensor. So if you follow the, the loom down, your O2 sensor is gonna have four wires out of it, like I said before. The uh, black wire is going to be um, the, the wire that you have to cut. So you're going to cut the black wire on your O2 sensor loom going to the sensor. So that's the signal wire that goes back to your ECU. So that's the wire we want to tap into like we talked about before. Um, so you're going to cut the black wire. The lead going back to the ECU side is going to be to the yellow and green wire. That's going to be your modified signal going back to the ECU. The other side of the black wire is going to go to the yellow wire. So the yellow wire is going to intercept the signal, go through the enricher, and it's going to spit back a signal through the black wire on the ECU side. The tan and, and black wire is going to tap into your gray wire. So that's going to be your 5 volt reference wire that your uh, split second enricher is also going to need. So that's going to be the only 5 wires that you need so to So the only up. other port you have to worry about on the enricher is the vacuum port. So that's going to tap into any vacuum line on your engine. So that mine goes back over to the brake booster. Um, because that's the only really um, relevant line I could really tap into. But um, that's going to be your signal. So that's going to tell it when you set it up, when it comes into boost, when it's in under vacuum, um, and when it needs to modify the signal. Another thing that's really nice about the kit that Split Second sends you is this little jumper wire. So what this does is if you set up your enricher and let's say you want to go back to your naturally aspirated settings you can just take this and plug it back into the plug and get rid of the enricher and this will bring everything back to your stock wiring so this will re-loop your O2 sensor and vice versa which is really cool all right so tuning is very straightforward and I'll walk you guys through it right now again this setup is going to be for a four cylinder 102 sensor we're tapping into um, most of the cases you'll be doing this unless you have a V8 and you have two different bangs stuff like that but for our case, you're going to have, the first thing you want to do is have, um, you're going to see the, the first uh, little red box right here is going to have five switches in it. So we're just going to fl flick the number one switch up, turn number one on. All right, so the other two settings that you're going to have to worry about is this resistor right here and then this enricher adjustment here. So don't, these three don't worry about because we're not using any other banks. We're just using our first bank. So this is going to be the adjustment that's going to give us the certain enrich enrichment we want. So the lower number value, the more fuel it's going to add into the engine. That's the more it's going to modify the signal. So the second thing we want to worry about is these two uh, resistors. Not this one, but the first one on the left side is going to be our first input. So this is going to be what triggers um, the enricher to kick on and modify the signal. So when this boost line reads a certain amount of boost to what we set that resistor to then it's going to turn the enricher on and start modifying the signal so the way I, w I like setting it up what I've found is that I'm going to set this up so that the enricher turns on at exactly zero psi that way it has a little split second to kick in before it passes into boost so this can get working because I notice that it doesn't kick on it doesn't adjust immediately it takes a few milliseconds for it to work so um, I'm going to use the first resistor, and the way you can do it is um, if you go back to the instructions, it gives you the voltage number that you can read off of the little pin right here. So these go to ground, so there's two pins up here if you guys can see them. We're worried about the first pin, so we're going to read the voltage coming off that first pin, and then we can put the multimeter back to the ground on the battery. 
So if we read that first pin, um, they're saying that if we want it to kick on at zero PSI, we're gonna want the voltage at 1.82. So if you guys don't have a multimeter and you wanna set it up the same way I do, the way you can tell that it kicks on is you have two little identifier lights up here. So if you turn the ignition on in the vehicle, so you, right now we're at atmosphere at zero PSI. So this would be simulating zero PSI, wide open throttle, um, transition between vacuum and boost. So the way we could do this, and this might be tough for me with one hand, is take your small flat head screwdriver and you're gonna wanna turn that resistor out. Turning it out is gonna limit the resistance. Hold on, let me see if I can do this. So I'm gonna put the flat head into the resistor adjustment right here. And when the enricher kicks on, that first red light is gonna turn on. So I'm gonna back this out until I see that light turn on, right there. So that's gonna be zero PSI. That means it senses zero PSI and it's gonna kick on the enricher. So the enricher right now is in theory on and it, it would be modifying the signal if it was running. So obviously this is, you're gonna say, well, what if it's idling? But idling is gonna be pulling vacuum, so this is gonna pull and it's gonna go off. Um, so zero PSI again is gonna simulate that little transition between vacuum and boost or wide open throttle. That's one way. I'll show you guys if I can uh, with the multimeter. In theory, this should be about 1.2, 1.82 volts coming off. So I'm gonna stick the negative into my negative terminal on my battery. And then I'm gonna pin, go to this little um, piece right here, this little pin. And we are at, one. look at that, 1.81 volts. So again, if we wanted this to kick on at one PSI, then we would turn that resistor until you read 1.96 volts right here. Again, if you wanted to kick on at two PSI, we would turn it until it got turn it out until it got to 2.10 volts or turn it in. Sorry. So that's going to take the um, tuning out of when it comes on. Um, again, this is going to be your enrichment. So when you're driving around, you're going to want to slowly roll into boost, and this is going to start modifying the signal, and you're going to drop your air fuels down to whatever you're gonna be at. You can try it at 50 in the beginning. Um, don't lay into it too hard, obviously. Wait to see where it goes. And you can turn it down or turn it up uh, depending on what you want your air fuel, your target air fuels to be at. Um, that's pretty much it. Again, it's very simple. It's gonna take a little playing around with. The way I did is I left it in the engine bay, just open like this. Um, that way you can do a pull down the street, uh, stop, pull over, adjust it again, do another pull. Um, again, go real easy on it in the beginning. But uh, it's been working great for me. It's phenomenal. It's, uh, it's a really good advice uh, device, and I definitely recommend it. So if you have any more questions, just comment below. Um, you can message me. Um, all right, have fun, guys.